Hey guys, in this video, we are going to see how to create about three to four material design components here in Figma. Now, we are going to make use of the auto layout concept as well as the resizing and constraint concept. So if you don't understand this concept, click the link in the description to go to my other video where I explained those concepts. So let's head over to material design and let's see the components that we are going to be creating. So I would come here in material design. Now let's start from scratch. I would go to material.io, then come here and click on components. When I click on components, I would come here and you'd see that we have different categories of components. We have the all components category to the iOS category. I would keep the Android category selected and I would scroll down and click on uppers column bottom. When I do that, I would come here and I would click on specs. When I click on specs, I'll be taken to the specs section. Now we have different variants of this bottom upper component. We have the variant which has the FAB, which is this floating action button stay at the center now we have this other variant that has the fab creating a center cut just like this now we have this other variant that has the floating action button stay at the right end of the bottom up bar now we have this other variant with no floating action button in this video, we are going to design the bottom up bar that has the floating action button at the center. Now, I'd like to make it clear that the bottom up bar is this blue section. Now, this white section here is not part of the bottom up bar. It's just there to make you understand that this section will stay at the bottom of your layout. So the first thing we are going to take note of is the icons. So this icon here is a 24 by 24 PX icon. So what I'm going to do is I would make sure that this icon is 24 by 24. This is also 24 by 24. And I would also make sure that this icon here comes in a frame that is 24 by 24 PX, just to make sure that all our icon spaces are consistent. So I would head over to Figma and I would use the material design icons plugin to get those icons. Yeah. So I would load that plugin. Then when this plugin is loaded, make sure this is set to 24 by 24. I would come here, I would have menu, I would select this, then come here, I would have the search icon. I would type in search here, I would select that. Then I would have those three dots icons there. You can also call those menu icons actually. I would scroll down to look for it. And here we have it. I would have this search icon and this icon here. I would select both of them and I would create an auto layout on the both of them. I would hold down my shift key and I would press the A key just like this. Now an auto layout has been created. And if you look over here on the left hand side, we have frame one here, which is our auto layout. So I would rename this to right sided icons. I would say right sided icons. I would save that. Now, while this auto layout is selected, Come over here on the right side and make sure that there is no padding around items value. Keep it set to zero so that we don't have additional padding space added to our icon space. Because as you can see here, the icon space is meant to be 24px by 24px. Now, the next thing that I'm going to take note of is this. What's the assigned space? between this icon and this icon. As you can see here, the assigned space is 24 PX. Now, while this auto layout is selected, come here under the auto layout settings and, and set the spacing between items value to 24. Mine is already set for me. Now, if yours is not set to 24, go ahead and type in 24 right there. Now, when you type in 24 there, you are good to go. So I'll come here, I'll drag this and I'll place this here to stay on the same line as this menu icon. Now I would select all of this. When I select all of that, I would add an auto layout on this selection. So I would hold down my shift key and press my A key to create an auto layout on all of this. If you come here on the left side, you would see that we have frame one now. So I would rename this to bottom up bar. Then I would save that. Now, while this bottom up bar is selected, I would come here and I would add a fill color. 
Now, let's say this bottom up bar is too small in width and I want to increase the width. I would come here, click on this right side and drag it like this. Now, you can see that we have a problem. As I increase the width of the bottom up bar, these icons here are just staying here and that's not what I want. I want these icons to always stay at the right corner no matter the width size of this bottom up bar. So what I'm going to do now is this. I would first of all, I would control Z for this to go back to the way it was. Then I would come here inside this bottom up bar auto layout and I would select the right sided icons auto layout. Then come here under resizing. I would go over to the horizontal resizing property. I would change this from hog content to fill container. Now, when that's set to fill container, I would still keep this right sided icons auto layout selected. I would come here, I would click on the alignment and padding property, then I would align the content of the right sided icons auto layout to the right, just like this. Now, if I come here and I select the bottom up bar and I increase the width once more, you would see that these icons are always staying to the right end of this bottom up bar. Now, that's what I want. So let's go over to our material design documentation and let's see what we have left to do. And over here, you can see that we have a padding left value of 16 px here. We have a padding right value of 16 px here. We have a padding bottom and a padding top value of 16 px, which means that all the four sides have a padding value of 16 px. So I would come here, keep the bottom up bar selected, then come here under the auto layout settings and I would set the padding around items value to 16, just like this. All set. Now, the next thing I'll do is to change the color of this bottom up bar to this shade of blue or something close to that. I would keep this selected, come here and I'll change this to blue, keep it blue like this. The next thing I'll do is to change the color of these icons to white, just like this. And we are good to go. Now, let's go over to our material design documentation to confirm the height of our bottom up bar component. And as you can see here, the height here is set to 56. If we come back to our Figma design file, you'd see that while this is selected, the height here is 56. And I did not have to set the height manually. All I had to do was get these other measurements correctly. Now, if you get these other measurements correctly, automatically the height of your bottom up bar will be set to 56. So the next thing to fix here is the floating action button, which is this. And going by the material design documentation, this is supposed to be 56 by 56. So I would come here and I would create that on my own. I would have an ellipse here and I would make it 56 px for the width and 56 px for the height. Then I'll make this black. The next thing to do is to go over to our material design icon library and I would look for a plus sign there. So I would say plus, okay, that's not giving me what I want. I would say add and you can see that we have this add sign here. So I would click on it and there it is. So I would come here, I would change the color to white. So that's that. So now we have our FAB. I would highlight this and I would group it. When I group it, I would make it a frame. I would right click on it and I would click on frame selection. Then I would rename this to FAB, just like that. Then bring it downwards to place it on our bottom up bar. So I would bring it here and that's it. It's at the center now. So as you can see here on the left side, the FAB is outside the bottom up bar auto layout. So to make this one component, I would select all of this and I would group it. Then I would rename this group to main bottom up bar, save that, then bring that here and finally click on create component. And here we have our bottom up bar component. Now, if I come here and I increase the width of this up bar component, you'd see that the FAB is always at the center of the bottom up bar component. 
So that's that for the bottom and back components. Let's go over to material design and let's see another component to design. So I would come here and I would click on cards. When I click on cards, I would come here and I would click on specs. So let's start with this one. So to start with this one, we are going to need to have a title text here and a body text here. Now, how do we know the size of the title text to use here? Also, how do we get to know the size of the body text to use here? If you scroll up, you would see that that is documented here in the material design documentation. You would see that we have elements here and under elements, we have title, which is for a title text. We are going to use the H6 category and the typeface will be work sans. The font style will be bold. The size will be 21 and the case will be sentence case. So let's go ahead and create a title text using the work sans font family or typeface however you call it so i would scroll down and let's see what we are going to type let's type title goes here so i would come here i would say title goes here then i would come here i'll change this to work sans to have this then i would set this to bold then for the font size i think it's set to 21 so i would come here i'll change this to 21 and we have this so the next thing is to create this body text so i would come here I would have secondary text. Let's see what we have there. Secondary line text, lorem ipsum, all of that. So I'll keep this selected and I would go over to the element documentation to see how we should design that. So for the body here, the typeface is still work sans. Now the size should be 17. So I'd come here, I'll change this to 17. And for the font style, it should be regular. So I'll keep this set to regular just like this. I'll keep that there. Now, the next thing we have here is we have two action buttons and these action buttons are text buttons. So to see how to design a text button by the material design standard, I would come here, I would open a new material.io tab, then click on components, then click on buttons. When I click on buttons, I would click on specs to see how to design that. So I would scroll down and you can see that we have text button here. So what I'm going to do is I would create a text button with 8px padding on the left and 8px padding on the right. Then the height of the button will be 36px. So I would come here, then I would say action. Let's see what's written here. It says action one. Then I would create an auto layout on it and have a padding value of 8px right there. And you can see that as this button is selected, the height value is 36px, just like what we have here. Now I would keep this here and you can see that the action one text here and the action two text here has a different color and it is bolder than the body text. So I would come here and I'll select this text and I'll change this from regular to semi-bold just like that. Then I'll change the color to something like this. Then I would keep this frame one selected. I would rename this to act button. Then I'll duplicate this button to have this here. So the next thing I'll do is this. I would have these two buttons stay inside an auto layout. The way to do that is I would select both of them, hold down my shift key and press the A key. Now take note that this auto layout does not have any padding around items value. Make sure it is set to zero. So I would keep this auto layout selected so that I can come here in the spacing between items property. I would change the value from 19 there to 8. Now whatever value you have, change it to 8. And we are changing that to 8 because if you come here in material design, you would see that the space between these two buttons is set to 8. As simple as that. Now let's go back to our Figma design file and let's select this text section and let's make it an auto layout. So I would select all of this text and I would hold down the shift key on my keyboard and I would press the A key to have that auto layout created. Now you can see that we have this auto layout and this auto layout. The card is coming together gradually. Now, what do we do next? The next thing to do is to select these two auto layouts and then create an auto layout on the two of them. Now, when you create the auto layout, in my case, it is frame three here. Make sure that there is no value in the padding around items property there. Make sure it is set to zero. Now for the spacing between items here, we are going to change this to eight, just like this. And reason is because if you come here, you would see that the space between this text section and this button section is eight PX. 
So the next thing to create is this media section. Now this media section is an 80 by 80 square. So I would come here outside this auto layout. I would select the rectangle tool and I would come here and I would type in 80 and I would type in 80 just like this. Now I would bring this then I would drop it here. So what I'm going to do now is this. I would create a new auto layout on this frame 3 auto layout that will accommodate this frame 3 auto layout and this rectangle here. So I would come here while this frame 3 is selected. I would hold down my shift key and I would press the A key. Now a new auto layout has been created. Now I would come here and I would set the direction property of this new frame 4 auto layout to horizontal direction just like this then i would expand it and grab the rectangle and place it inside just like this now i would keep this here so let's go back to our material design and let's see the numbers now the space between this section and this rectangle is 16 px so i would come here while this new auto layout frame which is frame 4 while it is selected i would come here and in the spacing between items property i would set that value to 16 to have this space set properly now the next thing to look at is the padding value for this frame 4 i would come back to material design and you can see that the left padding here is 16 the top padding is 16 the right padding is 16 now for the bottom padding here we can assign any padding value to it currently there is no padding value assigned to it so i'll just assign 16 to it so to do that i would come here in my figma design file keep this frame 4 selected then come here in the padding around items property and type in 16 just like this and here we have it so the next thing i'll do here is to add a fill color to a frame 4. So I would come here and I would click on the plus sign right in front of fill to have this. So the next issue that we are going to face here is to make this component a responsive component because currently if I click on frame 4 and I want to resize it, you would see that the content of the auto layout frame is not responsive. Now you can see this, everything is being messed up. So how do we start fixing this? We are going to start from the text. So I would come here, I would click on this title text. I would change this from hog content to fill container. Come here, click on this secondary text line here. Change that from hog content to fill container. Then I would click on the frame 2 here and I would change the fixed width to fill container. Just like that don't worry about this now for the action button text it is inside an auto layout right so i would come here click on the auto layout which is act button and i would set the text of that button which is the content of the auto layout i would set the position to the center of the auto layout since it is a button it is always good for the content of the button which is the text of the button to always stay at the center of the button so i would come here i'll do that for this also then while the button auto layout is selected, I would come here and I'll leave this set to hog content. I would also leave this set to hog content. Now there is a frame one here. This frame one is the auto layout that has these two action buttons inside of it. I would set that to fill container. Then we have a frame three here. Now this frame three is the auto layout that has all of this content here. I would set that also to fill container. Then finally, we have a rectangle here. Now, a rectangle here, I would keep it selected, come here, and I would keep it set to fixed width. Then finally, I would click on frame 4 now, and I would increase the width to see if it's going to be a responsive component now. Let's zoom out. Now, you can see that it is a responsive component. And that's that. So we have created this component and we have made it a responsive component. So I would keep this here, keep it selected, then click on create component, then come here and rename this to first card. And there we have our card component. Now, if we come back to material design, you would see that we have this little corner radius effect at the edges there. So I would come here, I would keep this card component selected and I would type in it there. And let's see if that's added. Yes, it is added. So we have that. And that's cool.
So let's go ahead to create another card component before we call it a day for this lesson. So I would come here, I would create this card component. So let's get to business. First of all, let's create this little section at the top here. So I would create this circle first, which is a 40 by 40 circle. This is it. Then I would create this title text and this body text. So I would come here, I would have title goes here. I would keep it selected. Come here, type in 21 and I'll make this bold. Then I would have secondary, let's see how that looks. Secondary text there. I would keep it selected, have this set to 17, then have this set to regular. I would keep this here. Then I would select both of them and create an auto layout. Now make sure that this auto layout has no padding around items value. Now for the spacing between items, now I will just set this to 4 and I would have this. So I would come here, I would select all of this, then create an auto layout. Now, when that auto layout is created, I would come here and see what we have. Now, as you can see here, we have this blue line to this blue line being 72px, which means that this circle here, which is 40px, will be subtracted from 72 to give us 32. This implies that this text here will have a spacing value of 32 from this circle. So, I would come here, I would keep this auto layout frame selected. I would come here and I would type in 32. And that's our spacing between items property. Now I'll still keep this auto layout selected. Come here and align the content to the center. What do we do next? Let's come here and let's see what to do next. We have a padding value here of 16. As you can see here, it runs from the bottom to the top. And that's also going to be applicable to the right, to the top, and to the bottom of this little card at the top. So I would come here, keep frame 5 selected, and I'll type in 16 here. Then I would come here and I would add a fill color of white, just like this. Now, while this is selected, you would see that our height value is 81 here. And why is this 81? When, if we come here, the height value for this card is 72. Now, that can come from the fact that we assigned too much space to some items. So I would keep this auto layouts selected, come here. And I'll set this to 12 and I'll set this to 12. Now, as you can see here, we have our height value set to 73. Now, let's come here and see where we have something going wrong. I would click on this frame and the height is 49. Now, the height should be 48. So, I would come here and I'll change the size of secondary text here to 16. Now, when I select frame 5, you'd see that our height is now 72. And that's what we have here. So before we proceed to create the next section, I would keep this selected, click on independent corners and I would have this set to 8 and I would have this set to 8 just like this so that we have that corner reduce effect there. Now what do we do next before we go over to start creating the next section of this component? We are going to make this responsive. So I would just click on this text and I would select fill container click on this text and select fill container. Then this here will be set to fixed width. Then I'll select the auto layout frame that has these two texts, which is frame four in this case. And I'll come here and I'll set it to fill container. Now I would come here, keep this selected and I would increase the width like this. And you can see that it is responsive. So let's go ahead and create this other section. Now this section here is a 344 by 194 section, which means the width is going to be 344 and the height is going to be 194. So I would come here, I would have a rectangle here that will be 344 and 194 just like this. So I would bring this here and I would select this frame here and expand it to lap properly and everything is fine. So the next thing I'll do is to select everything here and create an auto layout. Now make sure that this new auto layout that you have created, make sure it has no padding around items value and no spacing between items value. Now we have created this section. Let's go over to see the next section to create. Now, the next section to create is this section here. So to create this section is really easy. All I'll do is I'll come here. Let's have a text box here. I'll generate this. That's a lot. So I'll keep that selected and I'll set this to 17. Then I would have this action button and this action button. Now we have created action buttons before, so we don't need to go over the documentation once more. So I'll just come here and I would say, action one, keep that selected, create an auto layout and set the padding around items value to eight. 
and that's fine i'll select frame 7 and i'll duplicate it then select the two action buttons and create an auto layout on the both of them then come here in our documentation and see the space between these two buttons it is set to eight so i would come here and while this frame 9 is selected i would set the spacing between items value to eight and we have that now let's set this to semi bold then i'll change the color to this and to that also then i'll select all of this and create an auto layout now i would go back to our documentation and you'd see that here in this auto layout we have a padding of 16 px here so i would come here first things first i would close this in to 16 or let's make it 8 then i would have the padding left set to 16 the padding right set to 16 then the padding bottom set to 4 and the padding top set to 4 so i would keep all of this selected then i would add a fill color of white and this is what we have so before we merge this section to the other section let's click on this text here and let's set this to fill container and for this button here let's set the alignment of the button content to the center do that for this button also and that's cool so i would come here i would click on frame 10 then i would see if this is responsive the way i'd like it to be responsive and that's okay so i'd like it to be this responsive so the next thing i'll do is to bring this up and see how to merge it into this auto layout so i would come here and i'll lap it to this point and i would lap it also to this point now this auto layout here is frame 10 i would collapse it then i would expand frame 6 here and then bring in frame 10 into frame 6 just like this now make sure that the direction property for frame 6 is set to vertical direction so that this can work just fine now we have this now the frame 10 here is what we just brought in i would select it and i'll change this from fixed width to fill container so that it can be responsive so i would zoom out to this point and i would click on frame 6 i'd expand it and you see that we have a problem there now we have that problem because frame 5 here which is inside the frame 6 is set to fixed width i'll change this to fill container and the rectangle here is also set to fixed width i'll change that to fill container now if i click on frame 6 now and i expand it you would see that it is fully responsive just like this now i might have some issue here with this text staying very close to this section so i would select frame 10 when i select frame 10 i would come here and i'll change the padding top value to 8 change this to 8 also to have this now i would select this text here and i would close in the text box like this to have that now if i select frame 6 you see that i have this now i still have another problem here which is the space between this text and this action button so i would select frame 10 and for the spacing between items i'll change that to 16 just like this to fix that and we have this and as you can see here the height of the card is 382 if i come here and i select this card the height here is also 382 which means that we have done a good job here so i would keep this selected come here and click on create component to make it a component then i would rename this to second card just like that then i'll bring that here and with this we have created three components from the material design component library so that's that for this lesson if you like this content don't forget to smash the like button don't forget to subscribe and also don't forget to share.